Here we go, y'all. Fox elitists railed against the eviction ban. This is really something to see here. This is, I, I would consider this a festival of idiocy that you're about to watch. So they're going to come out against the eviction moratorium, and they're also going to take some horrendously stupid shots at the left. Watch. I, I would ask this, does President Biden think the Senate should extend it? You know, not all landlords are Warren Buffett. Mm -hmm. right. And yet exactly. there are people who all of a sudden are going to owe all the back rent. Right. But here's the kicker of all of this. Remember when states could not get unemployment money out and it was just so frustrating and it was like, wait, why are we, the federal taxpayer is offering more. So we are willing to pay all of this and then the states can't get the money to anybody and they're having to go to food banks and they're not able to pay their electricity bill and the, and the stress of all of that through no fault of their own is happening. Now, in this case, the federal taxpayer gives $49.6 billion to the states and they can't figure out how to get this money out. They sat on it. In, in New York, $2.7 billion. And then the Democrats turned around and said, actually, the landlords are to blame. Let the mm -hmm. landlords, you're the ones mm -hmm. should, should apply for this money. I think this is absolute incompetence at the federal level. They, I think that they actually, I think Nancy Pelosi knows that this moratorium needs to end. But here, hear me out. Just one last thing. If they pass a moratorium for another four to five months, where does that put you? Christmas. Do you think anybody's going to want to have eviction notices going out at Christmas? And then the moratorium never ends. And then what happens? So, yes, it's my favorite story for yeah. lots yeah. of different reasons. <laughs> so, Richard... And I didn't even get to the thing about sleeping on the steps of the Capitol. Oh, I, that's the worst. <laughs> talk about it. No, go ahead. No, you go. No, I'm, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Ugh. Richard, do you want to talk about uh, Congresswoman Cori Bush sleeping on the steps of the Capitol when we have millions of job openings and restaurants are having a hard time getting workers back to work and rent uh, landlords are having a hard time, you know, paying mortgages that they actually owe to the bank as well? <laughs> AOC says, I need to pay for someone else's rent because the pandemic's still a threat? No, I don't, and no, it's not. We helped a lot of American people with what? Free money, free rent for nearly a year when they needed it. Well, they don't need it anymore, and now they can help themselves. What did Joe Biden say? This was the, a worker's job market? Go work. This is, the, uh, this is the reason why you can't even compromise with temporary solutions. Because even if you give a temporary solution to a lefty, they're going to make it permanent. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as temporary, with, whether it was mail-in ballots, you know, yeah. or it's the moratorium. You give them and they go, oh, yeah, sure, and we'll get back to normal. No, they won't. Moratorium? They don't even know what that means. <laughs> um, and we don't actually, we, I have to say, we don't talk about her at all. We talk about the stories, and we're always very, very respectful. I think she's incredibly talented, but she hasn't lived enough to be that arrogant in her wisdom. And that is an issue with the, with, with the problem with the Democratic Party, is that their hard, loony left are young and ignorant in terms of wisdom. They don't know how the world works. You need, and they're not going to listen to me. Then I've said this before. With the five, we've raised the flags. We've called out violence, cancel culture, the mob mentality. But we do it. It doesn't land with the Democrats. So it, it, you need the remaining sensible, i.e. older Democrats, to take responsibility, you know, and pretend you didn't hear it from us. You know, make it your idea and we'll salute you. But we need, we need, it's time for old people in the Democratic Party to take their party back from the young and loony. The boomers. Yeah. Well, that is without a doubt the dumbest thing I've ever heard and the most counterfactual thing I've ever heard. Who the fuck do you think is running the party? Nancy Pelosi's like a thousand years old. Joe Biden's like two thousand years old. Chuck Schumer, he's old as hell too. It's nothing but... The old, the old guard in charge of the Democratic Party. Of course it's the old guard in charge of the Democratic Party. What are you talking about? And this, oh uh, God, Greg Gutfeld gets under my skin more than anybody else. He says, talking about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, she hasn't lived, lived enough to be arrogant in her wisdom. And then he says, they don't know how the world works. This smug assumption, which by the way, is a dodge because it's showing that Greg doesn't want to talk about the issue and make an argument on the issue, namely the eviction moratorium. Doesn't want to talk about that. Doesn't want to talk about that. So he just does a character attack. Oh, you haven't lived long enough to be arrogant in your wisdom and you don't know how the world works. So you dodge, but guess what, Greg? I've pointed this out a million times. They act like our ideas have never been tried, never been tested, and haven't been proven to work. They have been tried, they have been tested, and they have been proven to work. Uh, all these ideas that he thinks are so radical and extreme and arrogant, 
and you don't know how the world works. All these ideas. Work in Scandinavia. The social democracies have all these ideas that we talk about, or 90% of these ideas that we talk about. Now, obviously, the eviction moratorium is different. It's COVID-related specifically, but what does AOC advocate for? Universal health care. Uh, you know, free college. Um, higher wages. These things are all popular with the American people, and they're all policies that have been proven to work in a variety of different countries. So... When he says, you don't know how the world works, no, maybe you don't know how anything outside of America works. You just assume we have to have a system that's based on exploitation and low wages and a scam healthcare system and a scam college system. God, and this, it's clear projection. Because Greg Gutfeld is the most arrogant person I've ever seen in my life. And he's attacking AOC as if AOC is being arrogant. And, okay, so now let's get to the other stuff, because there's a lot of stuff there. I love the argument, well, what about the landlords? Yeah, what about the landlords? So we did the over $40 billion that we sent out to keep people in their homes. And that money has not been allocated efficiently and effectively. Um, and so we almost have enough money to totally wipe the debt slate clean. Because it's $53 billion that renters owe. And it's like 47 or something billion that we have that still can be dispersed to get to these people. So... But their concern is for the landlords. Their concern is not for the people, the up to 40 million people who are behind on their rent and can get evicted. And this is through no fault of their own. They're not just lazy. They didn't just wake up one day and say, well, now I'm lazy and I don't want to do shit. No, it was the pandemic that totally disrupted the entire economy and the market and people got fired and they didn't do anything wrong. And, but the concern is always for the landlords. Well, guess what? If that money's allocated, they're going to be all right. They're going to get bailed out. It's the, uh, you know, your concern should be for the regular people who might lose their homes and might lose a roof over their head. We might have a homelessness crisis, the likes of which we've never seen. Now, they also say, they also blame the federal government for the incompetence on this. Guys, I have a million criticisms of the federal government, but it's very clear in every article that I've read on this that the 40 plus billion dollars that's sitting there is in control the various states have the money, and the localities have the money, and the cities have the money, and they're the ones who need to distribute it. And they haven't done it in a decent way. And so this isn't something you can blame the federal government for. you got to blame the state and local governments for that. But no, they'd rather blame Biden and Democrats, so they uh, pawn her off to the federal government. Then I love, Dana Perino just takes the mask off there because she's like, well, if they pass a moratorium, another moratorium, then it's going to leave us around Christmas for the next one. Nobody's going to want to evict people around Christmas, so then the moratorium never ends. She says that like it's a bad thing. Who is going to openly campaign on this idea of, I love mass evictions. I love kicking people out on the street when nothing they did was wrong and a pandemic totally wrecked the economy. Isn't that the way it should be? Shouldn't we have evictions of millions of people? How do you make that argument with a straight face? She actually said, the moratorium never ends then, as if it's a bad thing. That'd be wonderful if the moratorium never ended. It'd be great. It'd be phenomenal. We got all the bailouts in the world for uh, Wall Street, but we don't have bailouts for working people who are struggling to get by. I mean, it says everything about what's broken with our system. Um, and then I love the idiot... Jesse Waters, who chimes in, and he's like, Get a job, bro. Go work, bro. Again, Jesse, do you think that everybody who lost their job when the pandemic hit, they're just lazy? Just like in 08, when the recession hit. Do you think everybody woke up one day and they're just like, I don't want to work anymore. I quit and I'm going to sit on my couch all day and get paid for it. Is that what people did in the Great Recession? Is that what people did during the COVID, the COVID crash? Is that what people did? People now, are they... Are they sitting back waiting for better job opportunities? You know what? Maybe the tiniest percentage, maybe 2% of the country is that they got some stimulus money, they got some unemployment money, and now they're waiting for a job that they actually like and they can afford to do it. That'd be great. I, more power to those people. What you want to do is force them back into a miserable job where they're depressed and they're anxiety ridden and they don't want to fucking be there and they'd rather die. That's what you want to do, Jesse Waters. So, so go get a job. By the way, people have... You know, they owe a lot of money. Even if you get a job, most jobs not going to pay enough where you could, you know, make up for however many months you're behind on rent. People owe a shitload of money that they simply don't have. It's, Just get a job. Is that how it works? Is that that's going to take care of all of it? God, he's just so dumb. He's got that mindset of like, he can't even think two moves ahead. Never mind like four or five. It's like, bam, get a job. Everything will be taken care of. 
So easy for you to say making millions of dollars in a comfortable uh, air conditioned studio. And then final point is back to Gutfeld. He says, this is the reason why you can't even compromise with temporary solutions because the left is going to make it permanent. To which I say, good. Now, that's not the case. I wish that was more of the case. It's not the case. Really wish it was the case. But whenever we do make it permanent, those uh, programs are the most popular in the country. Medicare, Social Security, phenomenally popular. Um, so now if we're talking about, I don't know, the stimulus checks or the child tax credit, I would love it. I'd love it if it was a UBI. I'd love it if we had the child tax credit um, in perpetuity. And talk about the eviction moratorium. Again, I'd love that. I would absolutely love that. Because again, this is no fault of their own. People hit hard times. And it just shows their total lack of empathy. They're a bunch of millionaires sitting in a comfy studio pontificating and giving their opinions. They're adding nothing of value to the system. But other people who actually work for a living, they want to see them kicked out on the street. There you have it. Don't ever fall for this bullshit that they're like, you know, we're work looking out for working people and regular people. No, you're a bunch of elitist pricks and that's obvious.